Dear all, welcome to Princep Street Presbyterian Church's 8.45 a.m. service. For those of us physically present in church, welcome to you all. It is good to see us fellowshipping again. Well, I can't see you all from here, but I'm, I'm sure that we're all enjoying a good fellowship upstairs. For the rest of us who are tuning in via live stream, we eagerly look forward to the day where we can all meet again in person. So let us, let us begin. Next slide, please. Once again, we light the first two candles in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, remembering that Christ will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us and to bring everlasting peace. Today, we also light the third candle, the candle of joy. The angel sang a message of joy, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Let us worship today and every day, celebrating God's abundant joy that flows like a river through our lives. <clears throat> Let us also read the call to worship together. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. In this month of Advent, we come together to celebrate the birth of Jesus, God's only Son, our hope, the one who delivers us from sin and the joy of every longing heart. Please rise as we sing our opening song, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Deliver born a child and 
sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we have gathered to meet you, to come and listen to you, to seek you and to worship you. You are the beginning of all things, the life of all things. In you we become and in you we live. O loving God, you are here and everywhere, around us and within us. You know our inmost thoughts. In you we hope and in you we live. You are the source of serenity giving peace that is beyond our understanding, giving grace where we don't deserve it. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. We pray all this in his name. Amen. Let us now enter into a quiet time of meditation as we reflect on all that we have done during the week and personally confessing our sins. Let us bring our prayers to a close. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Holy and merciful God, in your presence, we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Let us hear the assurance of pardon taken from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 5. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Indeed, we have been saved through God's wonderful grace, not by any of our own works or efforts, but through God's grace. And our salvation is through faith alone, by grace alone, in Christ alone. Let us sing our next song, Grace Alone.
Salvation is secure in our holy God, the Saviour King and the Ancient of Days. Though all around us can be turbulent, we can take refuge in the One who is greater than it all. Let us sing our next new song, The Ancient of Days. Oh, my God is the end. 
why may he not see what the future brings? I will watch and wait for the Savior King. Let my joy. continue our worship with our next song, Beneath the Cross.
Good morning, children. How are you today? Hang on. Okay. So what was the best news for you for all these past weeks? Is it school? Because the school holidays are now here, right? And the routine is entirely different. Was it your bedtime that has been moved back? Or that there's no one nagging at you to do homework now? Are you looking forward to that staycation? sometime down the road? Well, these past weeks, we have heard about the good news regarding the COVID-19 vaccination trials. Right? And then we heard that your, sorry, we heard about the shipment to the UK being the first country to do mass vaccination. Yeah, Uncle Nick is very happy. I can see him there. Wave! Right. And then our Prime Minister mentioned that we won't be the last country to get the vaccination. Hooray! So yes, we've been watching that space very closely and because many of us believe that this vaccination means that there is hope that life would resume to normal as we know it. So we anticipate the arrival of this vaccination. This morning and today, what are you looking forward to? Are you anticipating something fun in 12 days time? What's that? Yes, it's Christmas. And today I want to talk about joy. For Mary and Elizabeth over 2,000 years ago and their story of joy. But before we talk about the miracles and their story of joy, let's take a look at what joy is. Sometimes we use joy and happiness interchangeably, but today I want to tell you that they are different. Okay, so experiment time. Can you see? No? Okay, I'm going to light a candle. Well, actually, it's a tea light. And, um, yeah. And I'm going to introduce to you two friends. Hold on, huh? Sorry, a bit of a technical difficulty there. Okay, I've got two friends here. Let me hold them out. Okay. Can you see them? Is this better? Okay. So my two friends here are Mr. Mr. Happy Balloon and Miss Joy Balloon. Huh? They look the same? Yeah, they look pretty much the same. But I put like um, little bits of eyelashes on Miss Joy so that you can see the difference, okay? Okay. Now, so this is Mr. Happy, right? Okay. So let's put Miss Joy away for a while and let's look at Mr. Happy. Okay. Now, if you've gotten all correct for your things here or that your pesky little sister today didn't disturb you, so you're feeling happy, right? Just like Mr. Happy Balloon. Now this candle, okay, tea light, right? It's about the nasty, dirty things in this world. Maybe today, somebody irritated you. The guy down the road, the guy in tuition class, you know, he took your homework, stepped on it, or did something really awful to it. What do you think, how do you think when that happens, Mr. Happy feels? Let's put him near the flame. Oops. Did you see that? Okay, the flame went out, but anyway. Oops. When awful things happen to happy people, that emotion goes away. Right. So let's look at Joy now. Where's Miss Joy? 
Oh, hello, Joy. Okay, sorry about this. Right, so this is Miss Joy. Okay, you said that she looked a lot like Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy became this. Okay, now let's see if I put Miss Joy Balloon to the flame, which is still around. What happens? <gasps> Nothing. Hang on, Miss Joy, we try again, okay? Nothing. Okay, I'm going to put this out. So imagine you're Miss Joy. Looks a lot like Mr. Happiness. But when you put to the flame of unhappy things, Miss Joy remains the same. I'll let you on a secret. Let's see, I hope you can hear this. Can you hear it? What do you think's inside? That's right. There's something inside the joy balloon, and it's water. This water inside the balloon is like God in your heart, and you'll be unfazed by what is happening around you, however impossible and bleak the situation is. And you respond with joy when you have God in our hearts. Okay, today, Auntie Eileen's going to speak to the adults at service later, and she'll be talking about two women, Mary and Elizabeth. And their response and responses to their life situation many, many years ago. Although they didn't know it then, they, like us, are also anticipating the birth of Jesus, who in the, sorry, they're anticipating the first Christmas, which is the birth of Jesus. And, this, and Jesus is the reason that we are celebrating Christmas. So I'm going to retell that story and then show you a certain angle and then we'll talk about what joy really means. Right. In this story, the angel Gabriel appeared before Mary, a teen girl engaged to be married to Joseph. She was in the city of Nazareth. Now, Gabriel told her, even though she was a virgin, she would be pregnant and conceive, and she would bear a son. And she was to name the baby Jesus. Imagine a young girl, about 14, 15 years old, being told that. Mary being the typical teenager and skeptical, how can this be, she said, or in local language, Jindame. right? The angel then explained how that will happen and added that just in case Mary, being the teenager, doesn't believe, Gabriel actually told her too that her cousin Elizabeth, in her old age, was have, and for having been so long, uh, not been able to bear children, was in her sixth month of pregnancy. And as if to say to Mary, I know being a teenage expectant mother is scary, but I, meaning God, has also caused your cousin in her advanced years to be expecting a son. So can you imagine a young child or a young girl and a very, a very old lady, both of them, in normal circumstances, it would be impossible to be with child. But you see, nothing is impossible with God. And now our story gets more interesting. When Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, and mind you, there were no planes, no cars, no trains, no bullet trains. Mary had to walk or possibly ride on donkeys to get there to Elizabeth's house. And when Elizabeth heard Mary greeting her, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. Have you ever tried putting your hands on expectant mother's tummy? I'm not saying you should, but you ask permission first, okay? And then you feel the baby kick. Imagine that baby doing a somersault. How would the mother feel? It'd be something moving inside you, but it's quite scary, right? Then Mary also, and then after that, okay, in, uh, in the verses that, that happened after that, Mary went on to sing of God's goodness. And she remained with Elizabeth for three months before she returned home. You know, both these women did not have it easy, especially during those times. In Jewish society, teenage pregnancies, especially those outside marriage. Since Mary was only engaged, was a big no-no. And for Elizabeth, pregnancy at an old age, in spite of that, you know, it's a little bit um, out of the norm. But in spite of all their circumstances, they exhibited joy. Why do you think they did that? Because they knew that God will be there. Jesus and John, that's the name of uh, the child that Elizabeth was carrying, have been promised by God. And God used both these women to fulfill that promises he made to them, 
to meet to humanity so long ago. What about you? Is there something bothering you today? Something that weighs heavily in your heart? Are you afraid of school starting in 2021? Are you afraid that the COVID-19 situation is going to get worse? Auntie Daisy is not saying that you deny those emotions. Those emotions of fear, of being scared, is very, very real. I'm asking you to embrace them and know that they are there for a reason. But added to that, because we have Jesus in our heart, like this joy balloon, we can face the challenges with joy because joy in the form of Jesus came to us at Christmas time to give us hope because God keeps his promises. Let us close our eyes and go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for keeping your promises and for giving us Jesus Christ that we may have joy. Teach us to see beyond our situation no matter how ugly or challenging or difficult and show us how to respond in joy and help us to live each day knowing that we have hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, children, do not try that experiment at home. Thank you. We will, now, we will now spend a few moments to present our offerings to the Lord. So for those of us who are upstairs, could we invite the ushers to collect the offering? And for the rest of us giving via electronic means, please do take note that you can use your banking app to scan the QR code as shown in the slide. Alternatively, you may also use PayNow to transfer to the UEN code t 13 s 98 Please rise for the doxology. pray. Almighty and merciful God, from whom all co comes all that is good, we praise you for your mercies, for your goodness that has created us, your grace that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, your patience that has borne with us, and your love that has redeemed us. Help us to love you, 
and to be thankful for all your gifts by serving you and delighting to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're still standing, please be seated. For this morning's announcements, please turn with me to page 4 of our e-bulletin. So if you have not yet downloaded it, you will find it available for download on the PSBC website. So starting with page 4, we are grateful to the Lord that we are able to resume on-site congregational gathering here at PSBC from the 1st of November. And this is at the upper room at level 3 for a maximum of 40 people with safe distancing to participate in a live stream 8.45 a.m. English service. The sanctuary will remain not accessible to congregants yet because it is being used for live streaming with live singing. Congregants, of course, please book for your preferred Sunday slots via the PSPC website. PCGM is organising an overview of Revelation chapter 4 to 11 on the 2nd of January, which will be online via Zoom. Dr. Eileen Poe will be speaking. Please use, uh, register using the QR code in order to get the Zoom link. Next slide. The cell group is not only a place to study the Bible. The cell group is also a place for spiritual support and prayer and also the front line of congregational care. So as we start the new year with the Bible study and sermon series on Revelation, do take this opportunity to renew your commitment to your cell group or if you have not yet joined the cell group, if you do not yet belong to one, do join a cell group and use the QR code on the insert to sign up. The Mandarin service will be conducting an online Christmas for all service. And so I want to take this opportunity to ask each one of us to invite our Chinese-speaking family and friends to join in. And on page 8, do take the time to read Pastor Darrell's sabbatical update. And we move on to page 9 of the Bulletin for More Church News. So Christmas service this year will be, of course, live streamed at 10 a.m. on the 25th of December. And this service will have a pre-recorded Joyful Voices song item, sermonette, as well as a Christmas cantata presented by the choir. Infant baptisms will be conducted as well. And so congregants who wish to gather on site to attend this live stream Christmas service, special arrangements have been made to seat us in the multipurpose hall at level 4, which will now allow an increased capacity of 50 people. Please book your slots via the PSPC website. And this is, of course, on a first-come, first-served basis. Our watch night service this year will be also live-streamed. This time it will be at 10.45 p.m. on the 31st of December. Now, this watch night service will be the first time after many months that the congregation is going to be able to worship on-site in the sanctuary because we will make arrangements so that all the songs will be pre-recorded and therefore there will be no live singing by the worship team although other parts of the service will be conducted live. So in order to accommodate as many congregants as possible for this meaningful service, we will be seated in the sanctuary in two zones of 50 people each, which will give us a maximum of 100. Please remember that there will be no mingling between the zones and safe distancing measures need to be observed. Do book your slots via the PSPC website. And, okay, the next item of news will be the Hello Class. The Hello Class uh, has continued to reach out to our domestic helpers in our midst via weekly WhatsApp lessons. So, as 2020 draws to a close, 
we are organizing a year-end face-to-face Thanksgiving event which will be held today at 11 a.m. for our regular Hello Class participants. There will be an opportunity for sharing of testimonies as well as a Christmas message. Now, this event is limited to 40 persons who have pre-registered themselves. And so, congregants, please do encourage your helpers to attend. And if we have not yet registered, quickly contact Ms. Fu Huixian. The email is here right now, so that you may register if there are any available slots left. This will be today at 11 a.m. The Northern Thailand Subcommittee is organising a Zoom prayer meeting and update with Bangklang Baptist Church today from 2 to 3.30 p.m. And do contact Elder Justin Lee or Preacher Adriel Yeo for details. Please note that Reverend Daryl Chan will be away from PSPC for six months from January to June 2021. This will be three months of extended leave and three months of sabbatical. And during this six months, the session has appointed me as acting senior minister. So we do appreciate your prayers, especially for this period. And finally, Reverend Darrell will be on annual leave from the 14th to the 15th of December. And following that, I will be on annual leave from the 16th to the 18th of December. With that, let's take uh, this time to quieten our hearts to come to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray, please join me as I close each section of prayer with the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's spend this time to quieten our hearts and let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you, Father, for calling us to be your children. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to come into your presence as we pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we want to praise you for seeing Mary through the completion of her course of chemotherapy. And Lord, we want to thank you that the cancer has responded very well and is shrinking. So, Father in heaven, we want to lift Mary up to your loving hands as preparation is being made for her upcoming surgery. And Lord, we also commit to your loving hands her husband Joshua, as well as the children Joel and Alice, that they will experience your perfect shalom peace during this time. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Abba Father, we want to uphold the Hello Class Christmas event today. Lord, would you be in the midst of the gathering that your Christmas message and the testimonies shared will reach out to and encourage the domestic helpers even as they are unable to travel back home during this pandemic. Heavenly Father, we also want to remember the families of the domestic helpers that even though travel is restricted because of COVID-19 and many families are suffering challenges, yet, Lord, your word reminds us that you will be their help. And so, Father in heaven, we commit to you, our domestic helpers and their families, into your good and able, faithful and loving hands. Lord God Almighty, we want to pray for our young adults as they prepare for their decentralized end-of-year retreat. And as they reflect on this unusual year that is drawing to a close, Lord, would you help them consider your leading for the coming year? Father in heaven, may they experience you in a deep and profound way during this retreat. And Lord, we also want to pray for their speaker, our field education student, Moses as he prepares his message for the retreat. Lord, would you speak through him? Would you bless the work of his hands? In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, we want to give thanks for the safe delivery of baby Elliot Wong on the 3rd of December to Ryan and Tsuhan. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, would you grant Ryan and Suhan the godly wisdom to bring up Elliot in your way? And Father in Heaven, in your mercy, would you bring to completion your purposes in Elliot's life? We commit Elliot into your hands. And Father in Heaven, we want to pray for Fong Yang Yang as he begins a two-month ministry exposure training from December to January 2021 with us here at PSBC. Father in heaven, we commit Yang Yang to you as he receives exposure to ministry. And Lord, we want to pray that during this time of exposure, he will grow deeper in you, Lord. Father in heaven, loving Lord, may Yang Yang develop deep convictions that will last as he learns and experiences you through the MET period. Gracious Heavenly Father, we also want to thank you for your healing hand on Madam Yang Liu Fang, Kirk's mother, who has been discharged from hospital on recovery from pneumonia. Father in heaven, we pray that you will continue to lay your healing hand upon her. And Lord, would you grant that the treatment for Parkinson's would have good effect for her so that she will be able to regain a good quality of life. And Lord, we want to also remember Clifford and Laiha and the family as they grieve the loss of Clifford's father, the late Mr. Chua K. Hien, who has gone home to be with you, Father, from pneumonia. Lord, during this period of grieving and loss, would you encounter them and would you be their comfort and their strength? In your mercy, Lord, would you hear our prayer? God, our loving Lord, we want to thank you for the breaking news that the United Kingdom has begun the immunization program for its citizens with a fully vetted and authorized COVID-19 vaccine. And this is, this is a vital landmark moment, Lord, in the coronavirus pandemic. And so we ask, dear Lord, that the vaccine will have good protective value and it will have minimal side effects. Father in heaven, would you also grant wisdom and political courage to world leaders to make good science-based decisions for the good of their people. Lord, as, as we pray for the challenges of the pandemic, Lord, we also want to remember a more deadly and fundamental problem for humanity, the problem of sin. And so, Heavenly Father, this Advent season, we pray for your Spirit to move our hearts, that we would be willing witnesses to your love, to those around us. And Lord, we pray that especially you will give us moments to tell of your good news to those who do not yet know you and soften their hearts, Lord, that each one might respond to your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. In your mercy, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. So let us spend the next few moments in silence to bring our own personal and family prayer requests to the Lord. So let us bring our prayers to a close. Father in heaven, we want to thank you indeed for the gift of prayer. And Lord, we want to thank you for your blessed assurance that you are indeed good and able, faithful and love. 
And therefore, we can entrust all that we have prayed into your hands. For we pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. And so let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 56. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favorite one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called parent. For nothing will be impossible with the God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this fresh new morning. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our guide and our teacher. We thank you for your word. And as we go into your word now, we ask that you open our eyes, that we may see wonderful things from your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If this story sounds familiar to you, it's because I have told it a few years ago. This incident happened not long after Philip came to live in Singapore. One day he was in a taxi queue and a Singaporean man who was a bit older than him started chatting with him. And he asked the usual questions. Where are you from? How long have you lived here? Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Philip said, no. Then the man said to him, you should go to KK Hospital. They can help you there. Now, if anyone were to say that to Philip today, I am quite sure that Philip would reply, no, I don't think KK can help. My wife, she's 65, you know. She's way past her childbearing years. In our passage today, we encounter two women, Elizabeth, an old woman, way past her childbearing years, and Mary, a young virgin girl. Luke tells us that God enabled both of them to conceive and to bear baby boys, and they were able to do that because nothing is impossible with God. In this narrative of the Annunciation or the announcement of the birth of Christ, Luke mentions Joseph's name only once. He plays no part in this account at all. Luke presents the Annunciation from the perspective of two women, Mary and Elizabeth. And in doing so, he invites readers to share in their story, as I hope you will do as I take you through the text. In the first part of Luke chapter 1, He tells us of the visit of the angel Gabriel to Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah. The angel said to Zechariah, Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Chapter 1 and verse 13. Now, Zechariah did not believe this. He knew that Elizabeth, his wife, was well past her childbearing years. Nevertheless, the angel's words came to pass. Elizabeth did conceive, and she kept herself hidden for five months. And Luke continues his account in the passage that we'll be looking at this morning. In verse 26, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a village, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one. The Lord is with you. Now, at this time of year, many children put on nativity plays in schools and in churches all around the world. Yesterday, I read of one school in England that adapted the story of Jesus' birth in the light of the pandemic. Angel Gabriel has a Zoom call with Mary to tell her that she's expecting her baby, Jesus. The shepherds have been furloughed. Furloughed means, you know, you can't work, but the government is helping you with your salary. Mary and Joseph have to scan a QR code when they arrive at the inn, and the kings take hand sanitizer and a golden face mask to the baby Jesus. Now, in Luke's account, the angel Gabriel comes before Mary, not via a Zoom call. God sends Gabriel to Mary, and it is clear from this that God takes the initiative here and in the events that follow. And that's the first point in my sermon outline. 
Can you imagine how Mary must have felt at that moment? She's a young girl, probably a teenager. She has been betrothed to Joseph, who's from the house of David, but they are not yet married. And in Jewish society in the first century AD, girls were betrothed when they reached puberty. The marriage would take place sometime later. So Luke tells us, Mary is a virgin. Now as a Jewish girl growing up in a backwater village like Nazareth, she would have known stories of her people Israel from their scriptures. And she would have known that in their whole history, only two women had experienced angels appearing before them. The first appearance was to Hagar, the servant of Abraham's wife, Sarah. You will recall that Sarah was not able to conceive, so she asked Abraham to sleep with Hagar and so that they would have a child. And Hagar conceived, and, but Sarah chased her out of her house. Genesis 16 verse 7 tells us that the angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness. And the angel told her that God would multiply her offspring to such an extent that they could not be counted. Now the second appearance of an angel to a woman is found in Judges chapter 13 verse 2 to 5. She, she was the wife of Manoah and she was barren. And the angel said to her, you shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Her son was Samson. Now in both cases, the angel announced the birth of a child to the woman. Mary is the third woman in scripture who receives such an announcement from an angel. Now imagine Mary standing there in front of the angel Gabriel, perhaps with these two stories playing out in her mind. And she knows that angels don't appear to women frequently, only twice in their long history. Why is this angel appearing to me? Then the angel addresses her, greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Now Mary is favoured by God, not because of what she has done or because of any worthiness on her part. She is a favoured one because God has chosen her for a very special purpose. By choosing Mary to be the mother of Jesus, God is taking the initiative to fulfil his redemption plan. And then the angel reassures her, that the Lord is with her. Now, this is more than just a standard greeting. This tells her that God is reassuring her that he will be with her and he will help her in the divine service that he has prepared for her. Now, Mary is greatly troubled by the angel's words. I'm just a young woman in a backwater village. I am not of high status. What does God want of me? And she may even have felt a little afraid. So the angel reassures her again. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then he makes that wonderful announcement. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a child. And you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. I think Mary must have been gobsmacked, flabbergasted, stunned as she hears these words. She's a virgin, and yet will bear a son. And Joseph will have no part in this. And she doesn't get to choose the baby's name. It has been chosen already. You shall call his name Jesus. And the name Jesus means Yahweh saves. And that is exactly what God will do through Jesus. God is fulfilling his promise made to his people Israel many years ago. And that's my second point, that the coming of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of God's plan for the salvation of humankind. From the stories 
of the people of Israel that Mary has been told she knows about God's promise to Abraham. Genesis 12, 1 to 3, God said, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now we know that God made this promise to address the problem of sin in humankind. Sin has alienated men and women from God, but God wants to restore that relationship with his people that he has created. And so God set in motion his plan of salvation. And through Abraham and his descendants, and God promised to make them into a great nation, through Abraham and his descendants, God wants to bless all peoples on earth. And this promise to Abraham was affirmed to his son Isaac and his grandson Jacob. Now in due course, Abraham, God made Abraham's descendants into a great nation. And then God made another promise to one of Abraham's descendants, David, when he was king over his people Israel. And God said to David, and here I'm reading from 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12 to 13. If you have your Bibles, please turn to 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Verse 16, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Mary is also familiar with this story. She knows that her people have been waiting for a very long time for God to fulfill his promise to Abraham and to David. And now God is going to fulfill it through the son she will bring into this earth. Her son Jesus will be great and he will be called the son of the most high, that is the son of God. He will be king in the line of David. And not only that, he'll be king forever. Of his kingdom, there will be no end. And once Jesus has established his kingdom on earth, it will never end. When Mary hears the angel's announcement that she will bear a son, she's gobsmacked, but also puzzled. And she says to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? How can I bear a child when I have had no sexual relations with any man and will not do so until I'm married to Joseph? The angel explains to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. This child is to be conceived without any human agency. The Holy Spirit is the agent. The Holy Spirit will come upon Mary. Now the word that's translated will come upon is the same word that Luke uses in Acts chapter 1, 8 when he says, when Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Mary was there among the people in Jerusalem when the Holy Spirit came upon them on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. But before that, the Holy Spirit would come upon Mary and enable her to conceive. She was there at the birth of Jesus as well as at the birth of the church. The power of the Most High will overshadow her. The word overshadow is the same word that is used to describe God's glorious presence resting on the tabernacle at the end of the book of Exodus. God's mighty presence will be upon Mary and she will bear a child. And the angel does not tell her how this will happen, only that it will happen. And this child shall be called Holy, the Son of God. Now without being asked, the angel provides confirmation for Mary. He tells her that her relative Elizabeth is already in her sixth month of pregnancy. Elizabeth, whom Mary knows, an old woman 
a barren woman is going to give birth to a son in three months' time. The angel adds, for nothing will be impossible with God. And this is my third point. God does the impossible. If God can make a barren old woman pregnant, he can make a virgin girl bear a son. Mary was at first troubled by the angel's greetings, maybe a little bit fearful. Then she was puzzled by the angel's announcement that she will bear a son. Now her response in verse 38 shows us her humble obedience and faith. And she says, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. She's prepared to take God at his word. And she trusts him to fulfill his promise through her. She does not need a sign from God. She has heard the words of the angel, which she takes to be from God. And she submits totally to God's will for her. What is going on in her mind when she utters these words of obedience? I can only imagine. Is she thinking of her reputation? People will assume that she has done something shameful, bearing an illegitimate child out of wedlock. Is she thinking, how will Joseph react to this when I tell him? Now, Luke does not tell us whether she has these thoughts in her mind. Perhaps she has, yet she surrenders her will to do God's bidding. She sees herself as the servant of the Lord or the slave of the Lord. The New Testament scholar Richard Borkham, he makes this comment, and I quote, The title servant of God is certainly not demeaning. In Mary's own use, it is no doubt indicative of her readiness to serve God, but in the context, it is also an honorific title that puts Mary in the company of the special servants of God. The great leaders of God's people, active agents of his salvific acts, such as Abraham, Moses, Joshua, David, Daniel, and even the Davidic Messiah himself. All these men are referred to as the servants of God in various parts of the Old Testament. And Mary is included in that category. Mary's obedience signals her willingness to fulfill her God-given role as the mother of the Messiah. She's playing an active part in the fulfillment of God's salvation plan, not only for her people Israel, but for all humankind. And in Bochum's words, Mary's motherhood is of national and even world-changing significance. Let us turn now to Luke chapter 1, 39 to 55. And we will examine the response of Elizabeth and Mary. Firstly, we will look at Elizabeth's wonder when Mary visits her. And secondly, we will examine Mary's song of praise. Now, when Elizabeth first conceived, she saw it as a gracious act of God in removing her reproach from among her people. In Luke chapter 1, verse 25, she says, after she is conceived, she says this, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. A woman's barrenness was looked upon as a great reproach in Jewish society. And then one day, in the sixth month of her pregnancy, she gets an unexpected visit from Mary. Now Mary is acting on the angel's words about Elizabeth's pregnancy and has come to visit her. She has traveled all the way from Nazareth to this town in Judah, a journey of about 80 to 100 miles from Nazareth, which takes about three to four days. When Mary arrives and enters Zechariah's house, she greets Elizabeth. And as soon as Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting, the most amazing thing happened. The baby in her womb leaps for joy. And then filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth bursts forth with a loud cry. 
verse 42 to 45. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Can you sense Elizabeth's wonder and amazement in her words? She has no prior knowledge of Mary's pregnancy. They did not have email or WhatsApp in those days. But when her baby leaps for joy in her womb at the sound of Mary's greeting, she knows that something extraordinary has happened because she knows that her baby sleeping for joy is quite unlike the usual movements that he makes. So filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth addresses Mary as one who is blessed. She's blessed among women because God has chosen her and she's bearing the Son of God. And the baby in her womb is also blessed. And furthermore, Mary is blessed because she has taken God at, her, at his word. She has believed that what the Lord has said to her, he will fulfill it through her. Elizabeth knows that the, the baby in Mary's womb is no ordinary baby. She acknowledges that the baby in Mary's womb is my Lord. And she counts herself unworthy that Mary, the mother of my Lord, should come to her. Now, on the one level, this is an encounter between two pregnant women, nothing extraordinary in that. But on another level, it is also an encounter between the two babies, John and Jesus. In his mother's womb, baby John is already starting his role as the forerunner of the Messiah. He is pointing Elizabeth to the Lord Jesus. No wonder he leaps for joy at the sound of Mary's greeting. Mary too experiences joy as she hears Elizabeth's words and she bursts into song. Let me read chapter 1 and verse 46 and 55. So please turn your Bible. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on her, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the, in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Now Mary's song contains phrases drawn from different parts of the Old Testament. In particular, there are some similarities between Mary's song and Hannah's song in 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 to 10. In terms of format, both Mary and Hannah praised God for what God had done for them. And then they continued to praise God for his work in Israel and beyond. Both songs also share a common theme, God's work in the reversal of the status of people. And both songs celebrate God's salvific work for his people Israel. Let us now turn to Mary's song. The subject of a song is God, his attributes and what he has done for her in verse 46 to 49, and also for those who fear him verse 50 to 55. In verses 46 and 47, she expresses her joy in the Lord, rejoicing in the fact that God is her saviour. Mary celebrates God's great act of salvation. 
God is fulfilling his promise to bless all peoples on earth through Jesus. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus himself declares that he has come to seek and to save the lost. Mary praises God for giving her such a unique role in bringing about the fulfillment of God's purpose for saving all humankind. God has looked on her humble estate and has chosen her. And then he reverses her humble status. She says, he who is mighty has done great things for, her, for me. So God exalts her when he chooses her to bear Jesus. And in the second part of her song, Mary praises God for what he has done and is doing for all who fear God from generation to generation. And this extends her song of praise so that all those after her can use her song to praise God. Mary praises God for his mercy, his loving kindness and faithfulness to all who fear him. She praises God for the way he shows his mercy by reversing the status of the poor and the rich, the humble and the proud. Verse 51, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate like Mary herself. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. God has also shown mercy to Israel as he fulfills the promise he has made to Abraham and his descendants. And he will fulfill this promise through Jesus, the baby in Mary's womb. As mentioned earlier, the impact of this goes further than Israel. It has world-changing significance. The first advent is such a familiar story, so familiar that we may be in danger of losing that sense of awe and wonder at the birth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Luke 1, 26 to 56 should fill us with a deep sense of awe and wonder when we consider who God is and what he has done for us. We have seen how God took the initiative, not just in choosing Mary to bear the baby Jesus. Many years ago, he took the initiative to set in motion his plan to redeem all humankind and restore men and women and children to himself. God is a God who fulfills his promise through Abraham and his descendants, through David and his royal line. And the birth of Jesus tells us that God is a trustworthy God. What he says, he will do. And God is the God who does the impossible. He makes an old barren woman bear a child. He made a young virgin woman bear the Messiah, the saviour of the world. He reversed the humble estate of Mary and exalted her. I don't know what your circumstances are today. This year has been a very strange year and we do not know what 2021 will hold. But God knows. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He still takes the initiative. He still fulfills his promises. He still does the impossible. Mary was troubled and puzzled at first, but she decided to submit herself to God's will. Will you trust and submit to him as Mary had done so many years ago, even though the situation may seem impossible? Perhaps some of you do not know Jesus in a personal way, or perhaps you had known him once, but now you feel far away from him. Luke 19.10 Jesus declares, I have come to seek and to save the lost. He takes the initiative. He is seeking you today. He wants a close relationship with you. Will you answer his call? The baby John leapt for joy in, her mo in his mother's womb when he heard Mary's voice. Joy is one of the themes in Luke's gospel. He begins his gospel with joy and he ends with joy as well. 
Apart from Mary's song of praise, Liu also records other joyful moments in the infancy narrative. When Elizabeth gave birth to John, Zechariah burst forth in a song of praise. When Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms, he too rejoiced greatly. For he says, My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Chapter 2 and verse 30 to 32. And in the parable of the lost sheep in Luke 15, the shepherd rejoices when he finds his lost sheep. Similarly, the woman who finds her lost coin also rejoices. And the father of the prodigal son rejoices when his son returns. And he says to his elder son, it was fitting to celebrate and be glad. We must celebrate and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And Luke ends his gospel with joy. After Jesus' disciples had seen Jesus ascending to heaven, Luke tells us that they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. Now, tucked away somewhere in the middle of his gospel, Luke records an astonishing thing. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus sends out his 72 disciples to proclaim the good news, to heal the sick, and to cast out evil spirits. When they return to report to Jesus, Luke tells us that they return with joy. And then we read in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, in that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. Or as the NIV puts it, Jesus was full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Jesus, full of joy. This same Jesus wants to fully fill you with joy today. Amen. Please rise to sing our closing hymn, Joy to the World.
has received God's blessings. Let us all go forth with abundant joy from God in spite of our situations, despite our circumstances. For may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be seated my brother and sisters and let the post be a time for us to continue to respond to the Lord and for congregants in the upper room anyone who would like the uh, pastors to pray for you please remain in the upper room God's peace and blessings be with you Amen <laughs>